Ah, uh, Captain Kurt! Hello? Hey, what you up to? Nothing. Have you seen that new uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie that came out on Netflix? Oh, so it's a sequel to that 2017 Leatherface movie? No. Oh. So it's a sequel to Texas Chainsaw 3D? Uh-uh. So it's a sequel to the remake? Nah. It's a requel to the prequel of the remake. What the hell does that mean? I know. Direct sequel to Toby Hooper's classic, original sequel, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. I think it's a sequel to the original one. Another one of those? Something tells me we're going to need a lot of booze for this. Okay. I'll grab a keg and head on over. Welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten's Trash or Treasure. What are we drinking today? We're drinking Chang Sing's Yellow Turban Lager. They know your name. <laughs> Yuma U Tuma Dean. Today we're going to bring to you 2022's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So this movie starts off with a quick recap of the first movie. And John Lorquette reprises his role as narrator, <laughs> but for this time, it's more of like a documentary, which is being watched on the TV, talking about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, how there's only one survivor. It was Sally Hardesty. For some reason, Leatherface's wanted poster is still back there. <laughs> with the with mask. With the mask on. Like, that means anything. So it starts off with a group of kids, of course, packed into a car, they're going to this town of Harlow to kind of auction off all this property they have bought. Completely a ghost town. Peeking in some of the houses. This woman is still here and she really shouldn't be. She's on oxygen. She's got the walker and she's talking about how this used to be the orphanage. This house does look very familiar by the way. Figure appears on the top of the stairs in silhouette and a big hulking man. And she starts having a heart attack. Suddenly, these paramedics show up out of nowhere. Yeah, I don't know where. How they get here so quick, and they haul her off in an ambulance. This mysterious hulking man gets into the ambulance with her. The woman ends up dying. The guy who's with her grabs one of the guy's arms and breaks it, stabs him with his own bones, like, <laughs> into his throat. The girl is left alive. She sees Leatherface cut his mom's face off, makes his way back into town. How? I don't know. He's got a limp. He walks all the way to <laughs> yes. town. Miles and miles. He gets there very quickly, mind you. There's a busload of prospectors, too, that have come to buy the property in this town. Sally Hardesty, she hears that he's a back on the loose, right? He's still, still on the loose. loose! Suits up, she gets everything ready, and at the same time, there's two girls left in town that are gonna fight Leatherface. I feel like a fucking asshole saying yeah. that. So Sally Hardesty is on her way to go battle Leatherface. His Leatherface is on his way to go take out a whole town's <laughs> worth of people. Is Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 trash or treasure? All right. Let's be kind first. Always be kind first. What is the treasure of this movie? Okay, first and foremost is John LaRoquette. We're not talking about the Klingon version here. Original voiceover who he did from the original movie, right? Yeah. He does the voiceover in this movie for that kind of fake documentary, documentary. style. You know, he's getting a lot of work now. Night Court's coming back. Yeah. Another piece of treasure of this movie is really the, the kills and the effects. Like, they're pretty good. The kills look pretty good. The effects look pretty good, even though there's some blatant CGI in there. Yeah. They're still pretty effective and gory. That brings us to the trash of this movie. You can see the treasure part was very short. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very short indeed. Exactly whole premise of this movie which is just ridiculous it makes no sense at all <laughs> for young people driving to this town that 
They've bought. They bought, they bought this a whole, whole town. Whole these whole kids. Town? You don't even know how old these kids are either. Like, one looks 25, the other could be 40. What a stupid way to draw four people to a town. Oh, yeah, we're just gonna buy a town. But <laughs> like, <laughs> that sounds so ridiculous. You gonna buy a town? And then like... just sell it. And the fact they get mad that someone is still there? No shit someone is still there. It's their fucking town! Yeah, yeah, it's their house. This house that looks strangely familiar from the original house is all of a sudden an orphanage. They say the orphanage was founded in 1974. Who watched the first movie? Leatherface at least, let's say at least 29 years old. <laughs> yeah. So he's at an orphanage at almost 30 years old after the events of the first movies? Did the Leatherface start an orphanage? <laughs> like, I don't get it. Like, where does this orphanage come from? I don't know. And who's this woman? Why did Leatherface suddenly stop killing? Yeah. For no reason for 50 years what almost. Ha what happened in that whole time frame? And suddenly he's all <laughs> killing again. Did he kill again? Did he kill again? <laughs> because his old broad died. Like, what the fuck? Like, what Who he, is this? Wouldn't he Where still be killing? And Leatherface himself makes no sense. You'll watch the original movie and see how the way Leatherface acts, the way he conducts himself. A mentally unstable, simple person. Yeah. This Leatherface is all smart. He's all hiding the chainsaw over there to distract the people and yeah. come from behind. Like, no, Leatherface <laughs> is not that smart. He's a simple <laughs> person chasing with the chainsaw. The mask for Leatherface, which is really quite shitty. It looks like a complete joke. He looks like, he looks funny. He, he looks, looks like an idiot. You put him on, he's like, he looks like a stupid idiot. Yeah. That leads us into the characters of this movie. Ugh. They introduce that, that contractor guy and he's got the gun. They're all picking a fight with him and everything. Like too. right away, like, ooh, who would wear a gun? This is Texas. It's fucking Tex. What do you expect? You're at a gas station in Texas. I hate these fucking kids. Yeah. Why would you say that to a guy with a with fucking the gun? gun? Yeah, it's idiot. Like, he has a gun. Shut the fuck <laughs> up, you stupid <laughs> idiot. You stupid self-righteous fucking idiot. I don't know about you guys, but I couldn't identify with one character. Every character in this movie I thought was a horrible person. Yeah. Annoying and self-righteous. They deserved to die. Yeah, like you don't root, <laughs> you don't root for anybody. Sally Hardesty in this movie too is a complete throwaway, a complete waste. Three quarters of the way through the movie, finally she gets a phone call that, oh, it's Leatherface. And then when she meets up with Leatherface, she's got the gun. Say my name. When in the first movie did he ever learn your fucking name? Never. Not once did never. she say, I'm Sally yeah. Hardesty. <laughs> you never hear it. He doesn't know your name. She's apparently been searching for him for 50 years. With these wanted posters with the mask. Ma the ma yeah, oh, that's gonna do it. And she has the opportunity to just kill him right there and she doesn't do it. Don't give a shit about her because she showed up way too late. And they didn't do enough of a story arc with her. They didn't build her up at all. And it's not the same actress because Marilyn Burns died years ago. So it's <laughs> yeah. a different actress and it's just like, it's so cheap. It doesn't seem like it has anything to do with the original Texas Chainsaw whatsoever. Yeah. It's like a it's a rip-off of a rip-off of a rip-off. <laughs> the kills are so unleatherface like Leatherface is not like, oh, I'm inventive. I'm going to find a new funny way to kill. Like These are Jason kills. These yeah. aren't Leatherface kills. Leatherface is a chainsaw or a sledgehammer. He's not going to be all inventive because he's not that smart. <laughs> what happened to the family? Leatherface is all about family. The yeah. whole movie centers around them and the family. What happened to them? Leatherface is a small part in a bigger picture. Exactly. What they should have did was keep that old woman alive and have some sort of link. Yeah. They could have did that at least. Yeah. This movie shoves the subject matter down her throat way too harshly. 
In the original, it's very subtle. Like, it's about machines taking over the jobs of real men. And it's about meat, eating meat, and, <laughs> like, the production of meat. I mean, this is like, oh, it's about gun control. If they did try really hard to make a good movie, I feel sorry for these poor fucks because they failed miserably. If they wanted to make a farce, well, you didn't make a good enough yeah, farce because that was not in on the joke, you know? I, I didn't even go that far to even think that yeah. far about this movie. It is not worth it. This movie <laughs> shits so poorly on the whole Texas Chainsaw Massacre legend. It makes the original seem lesser than well, what it really is. Because well, yeah, the original is up there with all the greats. When people see this, they're like, well, the, orig the original can't be this good. Yeah. Just stop. Please stop <laughs> yeah, like wreckings. <laughs> Please stop raping a fucking amazing movie yeah. trash or treasure it is complete trash a complete piece of fucking trash it's one of the worst things i've ever seen in my life yeah it's fucking pointless it makes no sense <laughs> you don't care about any characters trash complete fucking garbage and, and you're gonna need a lot of fucking drinks to get through it and until next time, keep fucking boozing it hard if you're going to enjoy this piece of shit.